Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Super Fantify. This being a show where I talk about TV shows of the supernatural, fantasy, and or science fictional genre. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the season finale of Pandora, as well as the latest episode of Emergence. Like always, if I'm talking about something you want to listen to, you can always look in the description down below. I include a time when I start talking about each of your respective shows. So, for example, if you don't want to hear what I had to say about the season finale of Pandora, you can skip to what I had to say about this week's episode of Emergence. But the first thing I'm going to talk about is the season finale finale of Pandora. A great season finale. A lot of stuff went down in this back-to-back episode. So let's break everything down. First and foremost, there's so much. Okay, so we find out about um, the Harlan situation. Harlan freeing about like, okay, so how he's how is he backing everything? It's some very like altered carbon type of thing of like, he's got a whole bunch of clones. So basically, if he ends up dying, he can always come back in a younger, more modified body, which obviously he's, uh, you know, he's like, oh, this was set up just in case I ever got arrested or if I was assassinated or both. Would you have anything to do with that, Regan? And she's like, of course not, which is like, yep, she definitely did. Especially when she was like smiling when she was holding Cordelia after Cordelia was like, oh, I just want dad out the way. I didn't want him dead it's like she definitely had something to do with that so there's that situation now Cordelia and Regan are trying to like conspire behind their father's back yet again because it's like okay their dad hires uh um Leon Vox played by uh Manu uh Bennett which obviously like you know if CW wise he played Def Slade Wilson slash Deathstroke and Arrow and also in the Shannara Chronicles, Aladon is his character's name, right? It's been a while. Uh, but yeah, so I was like, oh shit, I, was like, I saw his name. I was like, oh, my new Bennett. That's awesome. Um, it's kind of an unrelenting um, hunter coming after um, him for, uh, coming after uh, Jax for um, Harlem while you have Cordelia and... Regan sending Tyrone. That's a whole thing because it turns out, you know, Thomas has definitely got more control of his abilities and everything. Um, he's his telekinesis, his ability to read minds. Part of me wondered at first because I was like, is he just getting through Tyrone's mind? Or it's like, part of me's like, no, nah, she did it on purpose, didn't she? And it turns out it kind of seems like she did. So, because she made such a point to be like, oh, the fortitude of her mind is too strong. That's why I'm kind of like, it makes you wonder. I mean, Regardless, I was about to go on a whole tangent, but it's like, nah, it's hard to say whether she lied in that situation or not. I kind of get the feeling with the way everything kind of played out, but we'll get back to that uh, soon enough. Like I said, there's so many plot threads happening at once. You have everything on ADAR with um, Atria trying to run the, um, you know, trying to, you know, run for election. Obviously, uh, the current seeker, Creston doesn't think he's like oh you're a clone you don't have the right to but then Polar kind of puts him in his place I even love her being like yeah it's a little it was a little scary but actually kind of felt pretty dope to be like if you threaten if anything happens I have like a connection to the data stream this will all go up there so last thing you wanted some problems so you don't want no problems essentially so I thought that was kind of pretty dope you tell uh, Polar was kind of enjoying herself in, under those, you know, under these circumstances. So they're trying to have a revolution of their own while, you know, Jax is trying to, you know, get answers about this whole thing. Because the moment she opened the box, she felt like, OK, she saw a vision of kind of the end of everything. And she's like, whoa, like I did something when I opened the box. That's the whole thing of like, don't open Pandora's box because the moment you open that box, all hell kind of gets unleashed. Well, basically all the evil, you know, in the world gets unleashed. That's the... um that's the what's what, what am i think um that's the myth at least uh we find out the person that um osborne met in the graveyard a couple episodes back was pandora and it's like wait a minute so then he starts the conversation comes up later on so there's not just, like Jax isn't the only pandora she's one of many pandoras so that's what i'm thinking i'm thinking the pandora that osborne was talking that's a Jax from a different universe. I think it's like an alternate, like she came to an alternate reality. Maybe they get like Pandora's or pro maybe it's a thing of like they get, cause she said like my world was destroyed and everything. So either she's from a, di like that's what I'm curious about. Like, is she like from a different world? Like that or was she, or it's, cause she said universe. So that's why I'm like, is she from like an alternate reality? Like an alternate dimension where it's like her world destroyed. So like, are the Pandora's dimensional not just like universal these things because like, she talks about you know her world being destroyed is like now you can you could potentially save yours so that's what i'm thinking like she's Jax from a, another universe but she grew up this is her like maybe like maybe 20 like 15 or so years or older maybe i don't know 
but that's where my mind is. I'm like, whoa, this is so crazy. Because I was thinking, like, are we dealing with a clone situation? It doesn't seem like it's necessarily a clone situation to a certain extent. Basically, I think all Pandoras look the same. They all kind of stem from the same thing, which makes you wonder, is there an original Pandora that they all kind of are DNA replicas of? Or, you know, it's just, just, just how they, this is just the look that they have. So, it's like, okay, so there's a Pandora in the box. There's this Pandora. Because I'm my understanding, and I could be completely wrong, the Pandora that's in the box, that's the Pandora from 150 years ago, right before Earth ended up getting destroyed. Or like I, That was my understanding of it, but I could be completely wrong. Because especially later on, she talks about the fact is that humans are, like basically, she saw that, you know, hu humans are imperfect, along with pretty much every other species, including like Zatarians. It's like, they're so imperfect. None of them, like in particular humans, because of their greed and all of this. She's like, I try to give them a chance, you know, when I saw the greed and all of that, but it didn't matter. They still ended up showing their true colors, so they're not worth saving. So basically, the Pandoras are meant to are sent out in the universe. They examine the race, it, like they examine and observe. That's kind of their job, and then they report back to the ancients of like, do these beings deserve our us to spare them, or do they need to be wiped out? And because I guess maybe if they're not a threat, then they can be left alone and they're fine. But if they're in it, because of what humans do, they expand, they conquer, and stuff like that. Maybe in that that particular Pandora's mind, it's like no humans can't be even trusted to stick around. That's how I kind of chalk that whole situation up. But I just thought that was kind of interesting because we still don't know because even older Pandora didn't even say anything because it was interesting too because Shra was like yeah like the fact it didn't matter is didn't she tell you Osborne never to contact her but these circumstances call for it and that's a big thing I'm wondering too why was it this particular chest opening was enough to set because it seems like these aliens that are attacked they're known as the protectors that's their job they're to protect Pandora say they were coming for her so they come for her and she relates the information that like humans aren't worth keeping around so then the ancients are going to wipe them out I mean it kind of all plays into itself so I'm curious like why weren't they activated by the Pandora we know that it being Jax or the older Pandora my I, what what I guess because she, maybe they're specifically tied to I don't know maybe they're specifically tied to um like maybe her, hers are tied to her, like the other Pandora's, hers are tied to her universe and Jax's. I don't know. Like maybe Jax isn't necessarily blown from this universe. Maybe she's from a different universe, but landed in this one. I, I don't know. So that's why maybe there's technically two Pandora's in this universe. But then, and I guess maybe that's why the other Pandora could come to this universe because it's like, well, her world's kind of been destroyed. It's kind of all over. So for her, it's like, I would just stick it here and live out my life. I don't know. I have no idea. There's just so much that went down. Obviously, the whole thing with Mata and Raylan, they're having their issues because, you know, he'd rather train and fight and, you know, rather than meditate because it's like he's trying to deal with everything. She's like, I thought we were going to try something, but I guess that doesn't matter because you're so caught up in all of this. But then it gets revealed, like, because the, alien, the protectors are coming, you know, Raylan's like, hey... You know, you know, it turns out, wait, that army of Zatarians we saw, those ships and everything, that wasn't for us preparing for war against the humans, which what the humans also thought, it was meant to fight the protectors when the ultimate time came. That they, Because it's a threat that both the humans and the Zatarians would have to face because them coming would mean the, because even, because even uh, the Pandora from the box had said, that all the other species in this universe were in like imperfect as well so they weren't because the faults that the humans have every other species have too which even Raylan's like yeah but that's that's yeah we're imperfect but the struggle to you know be more than what we are that's what drives every species you know so it's like you can't fault them for that yeah they all have their faults but that's just how they are so they should be destroyed because of that you know but um Raylan's like, yeah, I get it now. So now we can go help them, right? But it's like Raylan's dad had no plans of doing that. It's like he was going to wait for the aliens to wipe out the humans. Then Zatar will come in and wipe out the aliens. Because this way, you wipe out two potential threats. The reason why this kind of got pushed to this point is because of Osborne playing his hand the way he did, kind of threatening Raylan like that. 
that kind of set him off to be like, I, I, Osborne's too duplicitous. He's a reflection of humanity, I guess. So that's even more reason to like, no, nah, screw humanity. So, which even Raylan was like, it can't be, he can't be at fault because he's trying to protect his species. He's trying to do what's right for his species. And, you know, Mata was like, your dad's just trying to do the same thing. So it's like at the end of the day, she was like, what do you want to do? And even thinking he was, he thought he was going out there on his own. As Earth is fighting to protect itself, he goes out there and um, fights with them, you know? And even, he's like, even if I die, like, at least I'm going to die by your side, like us fighting as comrades. But Mata shows up with an armada, which her his father didn't give the order she kind of snuck away and did that on her own which even Raylan later on is like yeah me and my dad aren't going to see eye to eye because he had his whole plan and we kind of went about things our way so there's that whole you know complicated situation so there's that obviously I, I skipped over a lot but the whole Leon being kind of this impending force as he's just like walking and almost like almost like a Jason's borderline adjacent type character uh friday the 13th is one i'm in particular referencing um just like he's just so casually walking and is and this force and he's constantly like quoting like i guess stuff from the bible which is interesting and menacing uh when he you know like this unrelenting force um uh, poor uh what was it uh was he death sergeant uh wilson Felt so bad for him because he's up there. He's like, no, I can help you guys out. It's like, oh, I know some secret patches. We used to take them, but, you know, when we go sneak in and skinny dip. And Xander's like, are you done yet? And he's like, right. He um, helped them out and everything. His name's his real name's Elias because he told that to Jax. It's like he got shot. And he's like, you know, let, I'm just going to rest right here. He's like, don't worry. I, I got a snack. And she's like, thank you. Uh, what's and He's like, my name's Elias. Tell the purple haired girl I basically I did good because remember like earlier in this season probably like wasn't it like the first or second episode Atria was kind of distracting him by flirting with him so like he's popped up like this is like the third or fourth time he's popped up in the show and it's just kind of like oh that's actually kind of sad just to kill him off like that it's like jeez um it was interesting too because like Pandora like because her portal will never I guess her portals don't let her just travel wherever she wants to. It's a one-way portal to her dimension, her world. You know, because she says, like, if I portal anywhere, it's just going to take me back home. So maybe because she came to another dimension, like, it, once again, this is me completely. I could be completely misunderstanding this whole thing. But, like, if, anytime she opens a portal from now on, it's always just going to go back to her world. Maybe. I don't know. But she ends up grabbing Leon and ends up pushing him through the portal so we didn't see her pop back so maybe she did but she ended up somewhere else but it even it seemed like he was in some like it almost looked like he was kind of stuck in an in-between lane because we've kind of seen that before because uh the moment like the whole portal on uh, new portland when they opened it you know it was xander and Jax, when they had opened that, like they stepped through, it wasn't like they stepped through to the other side. So I think he's, I think uh, Pandora left him in that in between realm. Maybe that was kind of my understanding of it. So there's that. There's every once again circling back to Adar. There's a whole situation of the Seeker killing um, all the people that Atria was working with, and it's like. It made her disheartened because she was like, I can't do this. I don't want more people to die because of me. But the professor shows up and kind of, it's, it's like, you kind of have to do this. Like, the fact of the matter is, you might think it's not the biggest thing, but it is. Like, this type of thing has ripple effects. History has shown, you know, because it's like, for every one Adarian, there are six clones. They rely on you so much. So if you spark this revolution, it'll change everything. It could be a legitimate, like, mass like boycott around the universe because of just how widespread the clones are and even just on this planet alone kind of also showing like hey the clones literally outnumber the humans so the clones have more of a voice than the humans technically do even though like the humans might have more rights in a certain regard so it's up to atria to kind of continue this fight and even one of the clones that's with their uh six is like you know, it's not up to you about whether we sacrifice our lives or, you know, lives might be threatened in this situation. It's our choice, you know. So, but it, it seems like they get betrayed and Kristen's, you know, in control and everything. And he's telling Atria to back down or I'm going to kill the people that you care about. He's basically saying, like, I'm the law and everything. So for him, it's like, 
you know, you're going to submit and you're going to come back to be my slave here on Adar, which it seems like Atria gives in. Um, the message gets sent out over the data stream, which Thomas was able to hear. Um, I wonder, did he release anyone else or did he just himself alone escape? It was a, I, I'm assuming he used his cell. We never actually got the soul how he escaped, but I guess learning that Atrio is in trouble, it's like, nah, I gotta go, I gotta go. And he ends up showing up, and the guy's threatening him, and he's like, that's really a bad idea. And like those two guys were coming towards him, and he like used his telekinesis to make their devices electrocute them. So, uh, that's pretty dope because Thomas came from some he's in because i like that the fact is he has grown and it's something i kept stressing the entire time it's even some atria fell but it took till now for thomas to really understand the fact is of like he was trying to push atria to be someone he she wasn't like you know it's like even if she ends up loving someone else she is someone that he cares about and he's you know she has a soul she has more of a soul he was like than you creston or me put together because he knows what kind of person Atria is, but it turns out the Atria, the clone, the person that's up there isn't Atria. It's somewhere else, and it's like, oh, six, aka Adam, didn't betray them. This was all part of a plan, and now it's on the data stream about the threat of like, oh, you were going to kill humans, which that's against the law and everything. So his position as seeker has been cut short. Atria is going to, and it's kind of interesting because to see the fact is, and I think this is going to be that interesting thing where it's like, it's almost like the magicians in a sense, that the magicians is almost like, oh, every day you're going to class and everything, but as the show progressed, that became less and less of a thing of like, oh, you're going to school. It's not like a Harry Potter thing of like, oh yeah, they can't, like it seems like the academy is going to be like the focal point, but like everyone else's stories are taking them somewhere else. Atria is going to stay on, you know, Adar and run things, you know, it's like she has a really good shot at this whole, um, election thing. Pilar's going to stay by her side, you know, to kind of help out. Thomas is going to go look for his uh, dad. I even love it. And Thomas is walking by. He's walking down the line. And it's like, hey, Atria, you know, Pilar, professor, who are you? And it's like, and she's like, oh, and Pilar's like, that's Adam, my boyfriend. And he kind of looks and Adam shakes his hand. And is like, I'm six. And he's like, oh. And then he's like, well, uh, you're, you oh, so if you're dating Pilar, he's like, good luck, and leans in, you're gonna need it, and Pilar's like, he's just, he's just joking, he doesn't know what he's talking about, I'm like, when did that happen, that just happened, just like, okay, I just thought that was, that was pretty dope, I love that little moment, but it's like, he still doesn't know where his dad is, so either Tierney, Tierney or rather, well, I, that's something I haven't even talked about yet, but I'll get to it, Tierney, aka Odessa, ended up, maybe sending him somewhere else or maybe sending him off because he wouldn't do what she wanted to. I don't know. Maybe she sold him off and got profit for her. I don't know. But that's the big twist where it turns out uh, because Freeland, uh, Harlan had just mentioned this episode, well, the first episode about like a, a daughter named Odessa who had died. She was the one that he can trust in everything, but it turns out that's who Tierney is because Tierney had made a point to be like, oh, like I don't work for Harlan. You can actually say Harlan actually works for me and I'm like, what? I don't, I don't get that. So now in retrospect, it's like, oh, I guess it kind of makes more sense. Well, the reason why, because Regan didn't even recognize her, because she's using, I guess, kind of a similar thing to him. He's not in a, you know, he's in a clone body, so maybe she's the same way, or maybe she took someone else's body. Whatever the case may be, maybe Tyranny's the name of the actual person, but Odessa is who's like, whose consciousness is there. Whatever the case may be, she's been working with her dad this entire time. She captured Xander, and... You know, ah, oh, uh, Jax, and then there's a the whole thing because obviously, you know, Jax, because everyone feels guilty. Like Jax feels guilty because she's like, I, oh, um, I literally opened Pandora's box, which even you know, um, Raylan feels bad because he's like, I gave her the key. I kind of set this all in motion. But then Xander's like, I wanted to know what was in the box too. And it's like, you're just like Pandora from the mystery. You know, you're curious and you're stubborn. So nothing or no one would have stopped you from opening that box. So it's just kind of like, it would have been a matter of time. It's not like anyone really gave you the chance. You know, because even Schroll said at one point, it's like, yeah, enough of the secrecy. So I think at this point, maybe, you know... Osborne is going to tell her everything he knows. Also, I should know it's interesting because obviously, like you know, um, Odessa is trying to get inside of her head. Um, Sarika is there helping and everything, which is like, man, you were just the worst. But I should shouldn't be too surprised because you know she. This is her way of getting revenge against um, 
Jax for getting in the way of her plan to take down Pilar and all that. It's like, she, okay. I even love later on when Raylan, she's like, come on, Raylan, you wouldn't hit a girl. And he's like, no, I wouldn't, but I can't speak for my wife. And Mata is like, yeah, he can't, I'll speak for myself. And punches her in the face. I'm like, yeah, you really deserve that, Sarika, after literally everything. But it was kind of interesting. She basically took the premise of what she did with Pilar and kind of replicated it a little bit with um, Jax kind of trapping her in a simulation. Um, because the whole point is to kind of evoke certain emotions. Like, obviously, she's in, like, this, like, 1950s, 1960s kind of version of Earth. She runs into Greg, which for her, it's like, I finally get, I never thought I'd see you again, but now I get to finally thank you for saving my life. The fact is, we didn't know each other long, but obviously, she cared very deeply for him, you know, and everything. So, I thought that was kind of sweet. Obviously, she meets up with Atria, and I thought the whole episode was actually going to revolve around that, like, her being in that simulation. Not really, but it's just kind of interesting, because it was literally a repeat of her first day at the Academy. Strahla's kind of like, oh, student who's late, kind of grilling her, and then at the same time, Atria introducing her being her best becoming a quick friend like that and it's literally saying the same line she did from the beginning of the show so it's like huh i thought it was all going to play out like that but as i guess it's supposed to make that thing of like wait what's real and what's not am i going a little crazy here um even using xander at one point in time to kind of draw her out of the delusion trying to make it seem like oh he died because it was all meant to trigger her powers and stuff like that uh, so they can open her, get her to open a portal so they can take a sample of it and recreate it themselves, make their own portal. Um, <clears throat> what is interesting, too, is we meet her mom, which I didn't even talk about that, the whole thing of like, we get, well, it turns out Xander explained a lot to Jax that basically she was found as an infant. Osborne gave him to his sister, Eve, to <clears throat> look after and raised as her own and it turns out Jack's dad had no idea so he was in the dark just as much as Jack's was the only one who knew was Osborne and his sister like I was wondering if his sister was kind of a part but I think she did grow to love and care for Jax as, as her own so I don't know we'll get to it soon enough but the real interesting thing is she's played by Charisma Carpenter I got excited I, was, I saw her name I was like oh Charisma Carpenter I was like that's so dope uh, if you probably didn't think she's best known for Cordelia, isn't that her name? Which is interesting because there's a Cordelia in this show, but it's been such a long time. Um, her character from Buffy slash Angel, like, it's been such a long time since I've seen Angel, so I don't remember. But I'm pretty sure it's like, yeah, it's Cordelia, so I was just like, ah, that's so cool, dude. Um, but nevertheless, that was kind of neat. Um, I love the whole thing of like, you know... Interestingly enough, it's that Harlan would turn to Osborne for help with this whole situation because he doesn't trust Odessa because Odessa's kind of getting a little too big for her short uh, britches. It's like, hey, this is high uh, Pisha. Like here, men kind of are the slaves in this world. So it's like, the last thing you want to do is cause any trouble go before you get locked up in a cage. And because he, he's like, I'm your dad. I've waited 175 years. Give me what I want. It's like, you do what you got to do. I got to do what I'm going to do. It's like, yeah, it's like you put so much trust in it. It's like none of your daughters are like you. They kind of do their own thing. It's kind of the funny thing, I think, in the grand scheme of things. <laughs> so that's what made him decide, yeah, she's kind of a threat to both of us. So we're both on the same point in, you know, in this particular case. So let's work together. So we never find out about Harlan after that. I think that's the last time we see Harlan in the episode. So it was when him getting Osborne's help. Um... Xander managing to get free, meeting up with Cordelia and um, Cordelia and Regan, who were being held captured as well. And I, well, well, to be fair, that was because of their treachery against their dad. But still, it's like that's a whole complicated thing in itself. And I love, like, you know, it's like Xander's no um, later on when. Um, Jeez, I'm blanking on so many names today. Raylan ends up being like, don't worry, I'll track down the treacherous uh, Freeland sister. Whatever it was he said exactly. And he looks at Cordelia and Regan, and he's like, the other one. And then Cordelia's like, I don't think I, I don't appreciate that remark. 
or something like that. I, I just thought that was kind of a neat moment because it's like, I think he was talking about, yeah, the treacherous ones. It's like, yeah, they're all a little treacherous in their own. I saw Love He had to be like, yeah, the other one because, you know, these two are here right now. It's like, no, I don't, I don't like that remark at all. So there's that. Because the whole point that kind of triggered her abilities was using her mom as a means um, for the purpose of like, because if she thinks her mom's in trouble, that would have triggered her abilities, which lets them copy the portal. Then it turns out Odessa ended up managing to get away at that moment uh, because she was able to open her own portal, which she goes to the Pandora that's locked up. And there's someone that says like 10 points to Gryffindor, which we know that's something her mom says. So I'm like, wait, so Odessa and Eve have been working together. Did Eve fake her death? Is her husband actually dead? Was she willing to sacrifice her own husband to pretend like she was dead? Or what's going on there? Like, has Eve always had her own plan? It's like, what purpose do you have with Pandora? Because Pandora is supposed to be kind of like potentially the end of everything. But is that the point? You want the power that would potentially lead to the end of everything because maybe you think like everything needs a restart. So wipe everything out so I can come and swoop in and kind of roll. Like, what what benefit will you have from all this? What are they aiming for? Because it seems like they're kind of in this in their own, like what's going on there because obviously it's something you know because even osborne thinks his sister's gone so it's like there's so many like wait where everything's going especially it's like oh xander and um jacks have their cute moment obviously that puts a little bit of an awkwardness there of like yeah uh matza and raylan are going to give a start to this whole thing of like how they're going to you know be the future of zatar but you know it's still a little awkward because it's like oh yeah you know, because of the whole Jax thing. But then it gets even more awkward because it turns out on Hypecia, uh, the people who supposedly died on the ship aren't actually dead. That includes the captain and Greg. So I guess that's why they were also able to... Because part of me wondered, is that why they were able to be in that fake vision? Is because she already got their data before him? Because I, cause I was wondering, because I thought it was... Because I, I think the argument can be like, oh, Atria and Thomas are there because it's like... Or, because you got Shrawl, too, so it's like, I don't know, like, I mean, it's like using your own mind against you, so I'm sure it's not like they had to upload data, but that's what I was wondering, like, whether they had to take real-life data and implement it in the simulation, I have no idea, but it's like, now Greg's alive and everything, and it's like, he's like, oh, you look like you've seen a ghost, and it's like, oh, which is awkward, because now there's a whole her and Xander thing, which is like, because even I was like, oh, because I, I was actually surprised they killed off Greg so early in the show, I was like, oh, wow, that's interesting, but now it's like, oh, no, he's alive, for whatever reason, there was a part of me thinking, like, maybe there's some part, I was like, thinking that when he first shows up, I'm like, I know it's a simulation, but part of me is like, is it gonna be a twist where he's actually alive, and it's like, lo and behold, there's a twist that he's alive, <laughs> that's, it, it was just floating in the back of my mind, I didn't actually think that happened, but, okay, so, there, like I said, there is just so much that we still don't understand. I, I mean, I'm curious if that's something we could potentially see in a season two. At the time of me recording this, Pandora has not been renewed for a second season yet. I hope it does because I'm there's there's so much left unanswered that I'm not 100 percent sure about like where this all stands, you know? They're, they're still, like I said, this whole Pandora thing of, like, there being so many. And like I said, I think I'm completely misunderstanding. Because, like I said, I'm thinking this has to deal with, like, dimensional stuff. But maybe it doesn't. What about this particular Jax? I mean, do they all connect? Do they all share memories? I wonder, is that what Jax wasn't remembering her own memory? She was remembering the memories of another Pandora. So, are they connected like that? So, does that mean she could remember what the older Pandora remembered? Or was the older Pandora the one that was actually from Earth and not the one that was in the box? Because Osborne had talked about... Because she had beat up, when she was beating up Osborne, she was like, that's for putting me in the box. So, I don't know. That's the, it's so confusing where, what that really is. So, I want a season two to come so I can clear up all of these misunderstandings that I have. Also, like I said, it just seems like so many of the characters aren't returning to the Academy. So, it's like, because they're all basically got their own subplots to deal with so it's like is the academy going to be like the four like is it going to be a thing of like oh this is going to be like the center ground but beyond that like or, i mean it's like jack's going to make new pete friends at the academy because literally all her friends are not there except maybe greg 
Raylan, depending on how that whole situation plays. Okay, he might return to Zatar, then the old Xander thing. But like I said, they might not do the whole attending class because we got way more to deal with. Or maybe it's like we have to do, do class now to prepare us for what's to come. I have no idea. Especially because Jax did see that vision, which seems so real, which is supposed to be the end of everything. Also, like, what role her mom has to play in all this because that was, in fact, her mom's voice that we heard. So it's like, what is her and Odessa planning? Uh, what's going to happen now that, you know, because Harlan is still there obviously Odessa like he Harlan might work with Osborne and you know Earthcom because Odessa's out there and she's too much of a threat so does that mean he's going to put his complicated relationship with his other daughters uh, on the side because it's like we got to deal with my potentially more treacherous daughter and so like I said your family doesn't like you dude you're kind of an asshole so it's understandable but it's like dude I don't I don't know what to make of this. So I, I want to see a season two so it can clear up so much of all of this. And I'm so curious to see where it would go in the second season. And now moving on to this week's episode of Emergence. A lot of interesting things went down in this episode. So let's break it down. So obviously, everyone's a little nervous. Like Joe can't sleep and neither can Piper. Obviously, Alex is worried too to the point where even he's like, yeah, I like the kid and everything. She's adorable. She's awesome. But the fact of the matter is there's a lot of trouble that follows her. So it's like, well, what do you want us to do? Do you want me to just kind of abandon her? But it's like... Because obviously, Joe's saying, like, we'll look after her until we know that she's safe, find out who she is, and then kind of send her back home. And obviously, that's not something that really resonates with Piper because, like, her powers start activating because she even says it later on. When, her, when she gets scared, weird stuff happens. It's something on the other side of the wall. I think she started messing with, like, the pipes or whatever. Something on the other side of the wall kind of got started getting ripped apart or messed with because she started getting scared because it meant, like, going home somewhere she doesn't know or remember. But it also means being away from Joe, which this feels like home to her. She has a pseudo mom. She has a pseudo grandpa. She has a pseudo sister. So it's a thing of like, this is where she feels safe. This is what she loves here. And even to the point later on, Joe's kind of worried because she's like, because they made it so accommodating because she's so happy here. Even if she did remember something, she probably wouldn't tell them. Because I think there's a lot of stuff she's afraid to tell them because it, it makes her scared and she's afraid, I think, if she tells them about like the stuff that she is remembering, that it's going to make them scared of her maybe or, you know, it's just going to push them further to being like, oh, we need to, you know. She, so I think she took a lot of what Alex said to her, which even Joe tried to be like, Alex, he cares about you. It's just, you know, he's worried, you know. We all kind of are, you know. And it's like, are you worried? Which Joe is like, you know, she doesn't have time to be worried because, you know, you know. With everything, you know, that's actually kind of going on. So, Abby had came over to um, examine Piper. So, it does seem like her memory, it's not like her memory's completely messed with. It's like, she's able to create new memories and her memories seem to be good. Because it's like, oh, remember these four particular things. And she did. So, it's just making new memories is not an issue. It's just the old memories and tapping into them and everything. Which is something she's reluctant to do. But Abby did give her a... Um, a notebook a memory journal and she starts tapping on it and then she remembers like in her memories like her she looks down at her pencil it turns into a scalpel that has blood on it and then there's like someone in kind of like a uh medical outfit like holding onto her throat like their throat had gotten slashed so the thing is like obviously that's a memory but i'm wondering is it her that did it or was it someone else and was she maybe laying unconscious on the table or something and the cert someone nearby did that was it you know because the question it becomes like okay so because of, you know did she bring down the plane or whatever it was that she was on did someone else sabotage it like has she been like when it comes to her escape you know with these situations you're like okay was there an ally that she was able to turn to was there someone that's looking out for her or is she kind of all on her own in this situation like getting out was all, her, all on her own so it's like like I said, was she conscious and aware about it? Because it seems like she has memories of the past, so it does seem like she was cognizant of it all. It's just to protect herself, her brain, you know, blocked all that trauma because it seems like, you know, obviously her fear is what triggers her abilities and maybe she's afraid, you know, it, her brain is kind of shutting that off because if she remembers too much too soon, it's going to bolster her powers and things are going to get nuts. There's a lot of interesting things that kind of came down at the fact is that we learned that like at the hospital, um, they lost a lot of data, which included Piper's files. So they're cleaning up on that front. Obviously, it's to the point like Joe gets Chris to install security at the place. Um the uh, medical examiner wasn't able to get to the uh, bodies in time because for one, well, he was out sick. And he's like, I literally ate 
the flu because my kid literally coughed into my mouth. And then Joe's like, that's actually a very descriptive way to, you know, explain that whole situation. But regardless, um, the dude had snuck in there and put something in her mouth. So I was like, because at first I was like, oh, because at first I was like, oh, is he going to cut out the little thing that um, Piper had that she cut out at the end of the last episode? I was wondering, is that what it, does it have data or something on it? But it's like, no, he put something in their mouth, closed the drawers. I was like, are they going to explode or something like that? They're going to liquefy, aren't they? And so lo and behold, blood comes trickling out. And it's like, oh, uh, Joe and the medical examiner come back, open it like nothing but like a little bit of, it's goo. They're nothing but, nothing but goo left of the body. So it seems like we're definitely on the more science fictional angle of things potentially because it seems like that might have been like some advanced technology of like, I don't know what that is. It was pretty much, it looked like it might have been just like, I wouldn't even say acid in pill form. It's just like, I, I'm wondering what's, because it seems like the entire body broke down. Because I was halfway also expecting like just the bodies to explode in there, which maybe they did. But we ain't hearing the explosion, so it just seems like the body's just legitimately just liquefied. So I was like, what is that that you're able to just do that? Um, he knows exactly where to go to go after, um, Piper, but that's because the dude was tracking the um thing. I wonder how was he able to get inside of the house? Like, I guess, like, maybe he was like, oh, like, the moment Chris wasn't looking, he snuck in, or maybe, because I thought, like, oh, maybe he did something to Chris, like, he knocked Chris out or something, but I was like, no, uh, he's because the dude was asking about, oh, you know, like, he's with, like, some homeowner associations or something like that, where it's like, oh, I want to talk to the homeowner about, you know, blah, 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 you know, so... There's that uh, going out. And because he had the, whatever device he was using, he was tracking that and he found it in a sink. So it's like, huh. And the moment he found it, he just took it with him and he saw um, Piper, but he didn't take her. So it's like, is it not? It's, it might be a thing of like, oh, we don't need to take you now. We can get you literally anytime we want. We just got to clear the stage first. Or maybe he was planning on taking her until her powers activated. She screamed, and so it would have been more of a hassle because he knows what she's capable of. So it's like, yeah, we do this now when her powers are like this. It'd be more of an issue. So maybe next time, well, potentially whoever it is comes back prepared and is willing to um, maybe sedate her or something like that. You know what? This is kind of like, my because obviously, I made comparisons to Stranger Things. I'm going to make a super deep cut comparison that no one's probably going to make or think about. Probably even know about is It's slightly, with her powers and everything, it makes me think of Galarian's. Because Galarian's kind of borderlines in that, like, Stranger Things type of thing. It's, uh, you know, it's a PlayStation game. There was a sequel that came out on PlayStation 2. It was even like a little CGI animated movie adaptation of the first game regardless i'm going into tangent it just made me think of that but like obviously galarian's is his own thing because i was like powers through like syringes and drugs and stuff like that but for whatever reason it just popped in my mind i think the whole telekinesis thing made me think of that but regardless which i said telekinesis with her powers but i'm wondering is it more so like electromagnetism because it seems because you know because even alex had talked about the fact is like we're not talking about what we all saw i literally saw like a washing machine come way halfway across the room which even chris was like wait what's going on uh so but the thing about her abilities that's why i'm wondering is there like some electromagnetism to it because when it because obviously the effect it has on lights and stuff like that and it does seem like it's just pure like it does seem like she's able to draw stuff in but it doesn't seem like it's just telekinesis i think she becomes a magnet like she i think produces electricity that draws things in because later on when joe because joe figured like okay so they're cleaning house with all this stuff so what's the last thing they need to clean up the actual vehicle from the couple and when she goes there she sees like all this stuff is stuck to it like even her badge is kind of like going towards it because it's attracting all these different metals. She even looks on the inside. There's not even just stuff just there. It's floating. It's not just stuck to the sides like everything on the outside. So my brain immediately kind of thinks she kind of has an imprint that when her powers are at their strongest, it leaves such an indentation and stuff that there's remnants of that magnetism left. Hence why everything was kind of flo because that's the epicenter of the magnetism and it just kind of everything on the outside got floated in. But because like that was the epicenter on the inside Everything like gravity's kind of a little bit lost. I'm not a science person, so I'm sure someone from a physics point of view uh, could probably like break it down of like what really that means. Like, but that's where I chalk it up to. 
and it was kind of an interesting showdown because obviously like the guys got his gun um him and joe struggle chris shows up shoots the gun at him and i thought that's a pretty dope moment into the bullet coming towards the dude but it magnetizes to the truck and joe coming in with the hell mary with like having the um sledgehammer she lets go it flies towards the dude smacks him in the face and then hits the truck which was pretty dope I wonder what it exi- I guess like because he knew like there was probably evidence of like DNA evidence is because I was about to say why would you get rid? It's like all oh, right because they probably had their fingerprints all over the place so you need to cover up anything that could potentially lead back to them you know because he did liquefy the bodies ain't no d- dental or uh, fingerprint records gonna get you anything from that because um, even the Emmy, Emmy was like yeah I can look for tattoos and stuff like that to see you know if there's anything in particular maybe unique that we can track them through but it's like no that's not an option anymore so there's that um, it turns because I, I skipped over it earlier but there was like Benny and Joe talking to that guy what was his name Eustace um, he was a guy the government well these quote unquote government agents had hired him to salvage up the um, remains of the plane and then dump them in the ocean I love Benny being like oh see you know uh, the sheriff's here she can um, you know and, you know, say what my job is and vouch for my character. And he and she's like, okay, let's not go that far. But yeah, Benny's helped me. You know, he's proven himself to kind of come in handy from time to time. And Benny's like, see, a glowing recommendation. Um, but it turns out, like, he held on to this, um, the radio from the plane And it seems like there's still a charge to it. And every time something with a charge in itself gets close, like Joe's cell phone as she uses it, it turns the radio on. So it's a particular frequency that they were using, a frequency that's supposed to make it so like no one else can hear it. So it's a frequency within frequencies. What did he call it? Did he say a phantom frequency? I think that might have been what he said. Either way, uh, Denny's trying to get his story, but he's kind of like, well, I'm kind of walking up with walking out of here with nothing. So soon enough, my employers are probably going to pull me back and be like, yeah, pull him back from this story because there isn't really a story that's kind of there's there's bits and pieces there, but there's nothing full and concrete yet. What she's asking Joe, it's like, yeah, you figure stuff about that radio. You'll contact me, right? She's like, sure, probably not. Uh, there's also the card he wasn't able to identify. And I love that cute moment of like, he was she was asking Piper, do you know what this is? And then you have Mia being like, oh yeah, it's totally like a phone charger. It's like, actually I was asking uh, Piper what it is. Piper's like, is it a phone charger? And she's like, no. And then Mia was like, oh, I know totally uh, what it is. It's a hotel card key. And then Ed leaning over, he's like, no, 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 no. That's one of those uh, window scrapers for getting ice off your windows. I, I saw one of them on Shark Tank. Which one of those other things of like this is abc shark tank comes on abc i'm like i I just i can't help but notice that stuff from now on like i said i brought up in the first episode how they dropped like oh she's wearing a toy story t-shirt oh you're like what i'm like woody and it's like can you you only make those things because this is under the umbrella of disney can you make reference i mean sure you can make reference to shark tank even it wasn't but i think you're able to easily make that reference because it's literally in the same network i don't know i wonder i always i want to know the intricate details of stuff like that like like, do you even have to pay even to make reference to shark tank if you weren't on that same channel probably not i don't know it, I mean, I mean. Also, it's a pop cultural reference. It's like it's Shark Tank is a thing. Like, even if you're not that familiar with the show, myself included, you still know roughly what Shark Tank is just because you pick it up over the years. You know, so it's that type of thing. So it's just kind of more of like a cultural reference that like oh anyone would get. So there's that. Um, the cool thing is that you know, and it was almost kind of like this sad thing of like you know when Piper sees Alex again she's like I'm sorry because Mia comes over and hugs her and everything it's like oh like I'm so glad you're okay I thought you were so aware which is like oh that's so adorable you know because she even talked about the fact in the first episode she's like yeah I'm probably never going to have like a sibling or anything because you and dad aren't together but Alex you know is sticking around because it's like until everything's okay which Joe is like you don't have to but she he's like literally everyone I love is under this roof so until things are settled even later on being like until things are settled or until you get sick of me and kick me out I'm gonna stick around you know, it's like, you know, Mia, you know, has fallen, you know, love having, you know, with having Piper around and Piper easily warmed her way into everyone's hearts. I have been, you know, it's interesting, too, because when you look at the conversation between Joe and 
Alex, it makes you go, yeah, it seems like there's still something there. Even though they were divorced and everything, it's like, like I said, we... We know this a new arrangement has been at least two months, but we don't know if that's 100% like the divorce. Like, who knows how long they were separated, too. So, it seems like the divorce is still relatively fresh. And under these circumstances, it seems like it's kind of bringing them back together, you know, for longer periods of time. So, it's going to be interesting to see where things kind of go on that front. Then obviously, like I said, there's so much about Piper. Obviously, we're still early on in the show that we there's still so much of a mystery revolving around her because she's starting to think like, yeah, like because Joe asked her to, you know, finally talk about things in the sense of like what she's capable of doing because she's like, I think we kind of have to admit like there's definitely some stuff around you that can't quite be explained. And she's like, yeah, anytime I get scared, stuff happens, usually bad stuff. And she's like, I th she thinks she's the one that brought the plane down, which Joe is like, yeah, you are special. Which she's like, I don't want to be special. It's like, yeah, but I don't think there's anything we can do about it. But no matter what, I'm going to look after you, you know? The fact of the matter is, you know, that's why all these people are after you. Um, there was even that moment with the card. Like, she, it almost seemed like it was calling towards her. And at one point, she holds her hands out and it automatically comes to her, which part of me, I, part of me feels like that's going along with the magnetism. But also, like, she ended up dropping it and breaking it. But it doesn't seem like it's completely broken. It seemed like the top was, can come off and there's something on the inside, which is like, okay, so what is it? You know, Benny suggests maybe it's a data storage thing. I mean, because the question becomes, like, because obviously they went to Benny's place looking for something, so they probably assumed or at the very least know that he had the card, probably because he was the one holding it around, probably asking all different type of people, but they probably have contacts all over the place, probably got his stuff bugged, so they are able to probably trail it back to him, but couldn't find it. But then it seemed like the dude was looking for the card, so he didn't know that Joe and them had it. To be fair, um, Piper had dropped and broken, kind of was freaked out, so she hid it. Like any kid would, uh, under those circumstances. Uh, I've literally been under those circumstances myself. I think plenty of kids, have, people when they were kids, had, went under those exact circumstances. But, you know, I'm wondering about that. Is it simply a storage device or what? You know, what what is it? Because I'm sure he didn't know. He probably thought maybe... Uh, because it should, it was on the couple, so that's probably extra reason why he was probably going back to the truck, not only to probably burn it and get rid of all those fingerprints and stuff, but it was also to probably track down the card, probably because, like, well, they're naked, so he probably already went through, like, in a sense that, like, obviously this is, like, them at the morgue and everything, so he, he probably already went through their stuff to see, like, mm, that card's not here. Well, to be, once again, to be fair, he knows that Benny had it, or well, at least they know that Benny had it, so either way. So it, it just makes you wonder... What is that card? Um, but then, you know, because she, Joe is tired of being on the defense of this thing because it's like, these people aren't going to stop. So they have the ability to hide in the shadows. How about we bring them into the light? So she has Benny run a story. It's like, try not to, like, the story isn't supposed to be a lot. It's not going to be all the truth. It's going to be a chunk of the truth. Like, Piper's going to be brought up in it, but in the sense that, like, oh, there's some girl that was found. Obviously, there's some people covering some stuff up. That's what the story's supposed to be because it's Joe kind of going on on the offensive now. The last thing we see is, like, a signal, like the, ele uh, not ele Jesus. Uh, me and my words today. Uh, the radio turned on, so whoever is on the other side, maybe like them activating their side, activated this one, so that anyone that has this particular radio, whoever, you know, because there might be, who knows if, you know, maybe Piper's not the only one. Maybe there are other kids like her, and there's other people transporting those kids around, and maybe the moment, like, because they all rep, they're all on that same signal. That's their signal. So it, well, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're communicating with a plane, but I'd assume because of this radio, but that might just be their frequency that they all communicate on, whether it be on radio, like, like walkie-talkie radios, or whatever the case may be. So I'm interested to dive into all of this. Like, obviously, the mystery gets more and more, well, mysterious. So I'm, I'm very interested to see where all this ends up taking us going forward into the next episode. But really, that's all I want to talk about. So the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live light to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.